the NBA playing tournaments are right around the corner <laughs> next month. As we know, the seven and eight seed will face each other. The winner of that matchup is the seven seed, while the ninth and ten seed will battle, and the winner of that matchup will face the loser of the seven eight seed matchup to be the eighth seed of the matchup. And Luka Doncic of the Dallas Mavericks was not too happy about that. Uh, in a quote, he said, I don't understand the idea of the playing. You play 72 games to get in the playoffs, then maybe you lose two in a row and you're out the playoffs. I don't see the point of that. And even the uh, Mavericks owner came out against it saying he doesn't understand why the NBA is doing that as well. So do you guys feel that the NBA playing tournament is stupid? How do you guys feel, man? Why is the NBA doing this? Why are they subjecting the 7th AC to be getting, uh, to get their jobs took from the ninth and 10th seed? I want to hear what you got to say, bro. Uh, Jace, I want to hear what Jace got to say. More money. What you mean? More games. Duh. Simple as that? No TV. Duh. It's the only reason. It's the only reason I see. It's the only reason you see? Um, I don't know. I don't know why Luca feel like this. Um, He, he feel like that because he in that situation, obviously, because they, there's a chance that he could lose two games and be out. I What's do your name? They're the seventh seed. They're the seventh seed. They are the seventh seed. The Grizzlies are the eighth seed. Warriors nine, Spurs ten, Pelicans are eleven. So like, is it like that means that they essentially have a more extended playoffs? Basically, I I feel like the I feel like NBA should have uh, allowed the um the loser of the seven and eight uh, eighth game. So if the, when they face the winner of the ninth or tenth game, they should be best two out of three. But the play, the playoff team already should have one game. So like the the uh, the winner, the loser, I mean the winner of the ninth or tenth seed has to beat them twice. Rather than being the ones to get their spot, that would make the most logical sense in my yeah. opinion. I don't know, bro. I don't understand what they was thinking. Well, I do understand what they were thinking about money, but like from a game, like player wise aspect, I don't understand why they did that. I just think they could have went about it better, considering that this season was rushed to That's start. True. In addition to that, um, I just think they could have went into it more open minded because. If the Lakers were in a position to where they'd be closer to the A seed, and of course they have too much talent, but still, you got to think about it from that aspect, then they're going to be hurting because, as we see, they already have guys that are nicked up. So I just don't like it from the injury standpoint. We're already seeing guys sitting out back to backs because, you know, it's so much concern. Jamal Murray's knee going out the other night. It's just like, it's already a lot with this season. So to add the play in, I mean, I get it. These eight, nine, seven seeds, they're not real legitimate contenders for a championship. But, I mean, think about their wallets. Think about their safety. Think about that. And just putting them out there to play more games is definitely more dangerous. So I think the NBA just needs to look in the mirror and say, we don't need any more of this. Let's go back to the regular 82-game format. Best eight teams are in, period. And it's crazy how, like, this came about around the same time the NFL did the same thing. So, I feel like they both tie in the same way. Because, <laughs> like, they did – I'm going to be stat, Like, they did lose money. The, uh, NFL, I think the NFL – I know every, for sure every, the NFL, Every industry lost money because of the – They lost money. So, and like, yeah, they trying to they trying to get that money back. WWE had their most profitable year. But, you know, I don't know if you guys count that. I'm just saying. How? They know he was hurting with no fans. It was clear as day. You could see they, all, the, all the cuts they had last year, they was hurting. But under – I'm just saying, I, I don't want to get too much off topic, but under stock and stuff uh, and merchandise sales, they said they had their best year. Mm-hmm. So in the other areas. You're supposed so to like, say that. What's going on? Because the shirts was for $10 and $4. They were doing deals every week. I will say this about the, the playing tournament. I did my, – uh, my professor was talking to us, and he was saying, like, how – Today's athletes are in the best shapes of their, of their careers, like any other like previous generation. They, uh, if they were, if ever any other athletes that would ha- be able to handle six games in nine nights would be these athletes. And he talked about how back in the '90s, they players in their in their era was playing six games in nine days. So it's not crazy. Just, he just feels like the new era at the new the today's athletes just aren't used to this kind of treatment. I don't know yeah. because of the AAU culture or things like that being coddled stuff like that, but with them coming in off. Them players are doing hard drugs, so, I mean, yeah. What, what you thinking, Cut? Well, how, how you feel about the playing tournaments? Did the NBA miss the ball on this one? I think the NBA is given the opportunity without getting rid of the East and Western Conference. 
That's all this is, is just to not do that. So it's giving more teams a chance to make them feel like they have a chance, make the fans feel like they have a chance. It makes more opportunity for games, playing games and all this stuff. It's just more, it's more opportunity to make money, but it's also a chance for those teams that probably would never have a chance. And everybody knows the NBA was being pressured because the West is known to have better teams than the East. So that everybody was pushing for a conferenceless, a conferenceless NBA. And I personally like the play in. I think it's a good, it's a good cover up. But I think the ultimate way for the NBA to just hit like perfection as far as the playoffs go would be to just go conferenceless. Like with basketball, you don't really think of a conference as much as you do in football. Even if they do play each other four times and three times, like the old schedule used to be, you play everybody in your conference four times, then you play a couple teams three times, and then you play, you know, the, the west, the opposite coast twice. You know, they play, they come to you, do you go to them? But this season, they switched it to where they play their everybody in their conference three times, and they play across conference twice. They play them twice, so that's how they got to the seventy-two games. So. To be honest, I prefer um I just prefer to go conference list. That's the only and that's the way that they can expand into different markets. That's the way Seattle gets a team. That's the way, you know, you add another team, it could be 32 teams, and it won't be a big deal because everybody played each other twice or three times or whatever. So I think if they think in bigger picture, they'll just gotta they gotta realize that this East West thing is dated. Mm. You don't care about preserving history. They already changed. They already changed the All Star game, so might as well. Mm. How you feeling, John? Yeah, what's the fourteen times? I mean, I don't know. The playing tournament. The more and more you see throughout the season how the players respond to just the games and scheduling, the more you think, "Dang, was the playing tournament even thought with, you know, the intention of a COVID type of season, or you know, whether just kind of rushed it." Um, and try to make it seem like it was something that everybody can get behind. It is propaganda, the playing tournament. Like, there are underlying reasons why this was done for corporations, and they know it. Uh, it's a business, and you know what a business is. So they were able to think about what it's could what? happen as a result of viewership. And they are going to do what's always best for the NBA as far as revenue goes. It, it benefits fans, and it makes sure that the players are safe. And I don't have a problem with it, but I don't think – that's exactly what the NBA was thinking about. But my team being the Chicago Bulls in a 10th spot right now for the Eastern Conference, I certainly am grateful being that we traded for an all-star. And when you think about the rosters that exist beyond the playoff teams, the eight seeds, you think, dang, maybe they do need a second chance to show that they should be in the playoffs because, you know, Levine, Vucevic, they ain't had a whole season to figure it out, but they're two all-stars and you would think that they deserve to be in the playoffs. So, you know, why not get that opportunity? Plus the Knicks being like the AC right now, you know, they were trash last year. So I think it's pretty cool to actually know for real, for real, that they should be a playoff team because from going 14th last year to eight, why not give them like that that extra game to say, you know, okay, we're, we're for real legit. But I don't know. That's just how it works. Unfortunately, players are getting hurt. So, you know, we'll just see how the players respond in. If they need to make modifications, I'm sure they will, like, for the next year. I'm sure the games will be fun, and we've seen it last year with the uh, Blazers and Grizzlies in the playing tournament in the bubble. That game was fun to watch. So I think they're just trying to recapture that glory just just with um, – just in that – just in, like, actual stadiums, I'd rather be in Portland or the current uh, ninth and 10th seed of the uh, West is the Warriors and Spurs, so in San Antonio or Golden State, San Fran. So – I think they're trying to get that magic going, have that hype going, because there's the growing belief that, you know, the uh, NBA playoffs, I mean, the regular season doesn't matter. So just having meaningful games at the end before the real playoffs start is just what they're going after, probably. John didn't hear me when he was talking. I said, he said, it's a business. And I said, it's a what? <laughs> he said, it's a what? It's a business. Oh, yeah, it is a business. Hey, well, that was on that night with fire, bro. We got Watch the head, Jace. Hey, T. You how long you been playing me? You so you watched it. Like shit. Boy, <laughs> well, he had to get them bodies off, man. 
Uh, we gonna talk about that a little later. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, uh, yeah, y'all gotta, get, y'all gotta be caught up. Uh, but, uh, uh, last, last word about playing. I think the eighth and ninth and tenth seeds, like they're not too far removed. It ain't like it's a crazy amount of games back that the tenth seed is from the eighth. And I think if you're a seven seed and you have a nice record, like the current seven seed right now is the Mavericks. I think. Yeah. Eight, like the Grizzlies. Yeah. Um. So. The Mavericks have been shaky all year. Like you've been up and down all year. Yeah, like, I've been doing all year. So. I think I think they just don't they don't understand. Like since we're already seven C, why if we lose two games, we're out of it. That's like that's their thinking. Luca sounds scared to me. Yeah, he sounds scared. <laughs> really do. <laughs> he like he played in the regular playoffs. He only played in the regular playoffs one time. He only played in it once. Luca so, ain't scared. He don't have an opinion. Luca ain't Luca's scared. Hooper. Hooper. Luca gonna hoop. He's scared about Porzinga. <laughs> He's scared about bro. Because he don't know if he's going to show up or not. That is very true. So, look, they will play the Grizzlies first. If they lose to Ja and Jaren comes back and they and they start balling for real. And anyway, I'm not to cut you off, John. They The Grizzlies were supposed to beat, beat them last beat. night. They were supposed to beat them last night. I picked the Grizzlies to win last night. That shot was, I mean, yeah, he, he could have make it lucky. He's not lucky, but clutch shot. He called it lucky. He called it lucky. Luca called it lucky. Yeah, he, he knew it. Lucky. He knew it. But then after that, they would end up playing the Warriors or the Spurs, whoever win that game. I like the Warriors. I like the, Warriors I like the Spurs. I like the Warriors, number one. Pelicans, number two over any of them teams. Pelicans got to make it first. I want to believe the Pelicans, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Pelicans got to make it first. Seven last night. Bro, we lost to the Knicks, bro, yeah. last night. Knicks are not garbage. That's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> it was the way we lost to them, bro. No. <laughs> And right. the and the Curry did that against the Thunder. Let's let's yeah, come on, guys. Let's be easy. did, but but they put 147 up. <laughs> it's the Thunder. Yeah. I understand that, they but the, they still professional athletes, bro. Uh, like, they, that team is a team full of rookies. Shay didn't, didn't even play. Shay didn't even play. Right lost now. by 58. Without Man, like, you at like the Warriors, oh, the Thunder like beat a, them to 58. That was the Thunder no, that beat them. No, that wasn't. I'm just saying. Oh, then it don't matter. Without Curry, they lost by 58, and then he comes back and they beat a the team by 30. That's not that wasn't his first game back. Before. I no. said 